Hello, Robert speaking. Hello, Robert. My name's Scott. It was myself that texted you back there just to help me enjoy life for a bit. Oh, thank you, Scott. Yes, I'm looking at... I haven't read the book all the way through. I've just been skimming through various chapters that interested me. Um, uh-huh. I've been looking at chapter 54, The Role of the Faithful and Discreet Slave. Um, which I believe your book, it doesn't mention the 1919 date here, but elsewhere on your website, you claim that the faithful and discreet slave was appointed in the year 1919. Mm -hmm. Um, That kind of puzzled me. Is there any biblical evidence for that, that the governing body was appointed in 1919? Yes, it's all to do with the fact that when Jesus came back to power in 1914 in Hiram, then at that point there was a testing of those who would continue to declare the good news. And there was a testing period of three and a half years, which takes us up to 1919. No, no. No, no. No, late 1914 and three and a half years doesn't take you to 1919. Um, um, so there was a test. Sorry? Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I do beg your pardon. Yeah, no, that's all right. So in, in 1919, when the, the ones who were taking the lead in the declaration of the good news of God's kingdom were actually released at that point, then the blessing from Jesus Christ continued upon those ones from that point, and they continued to feed the spiritual sheep here on earth. Um, from from my understanding, I thought that you used to teach that there was a time of testing from 19, um, was it from 1914 to 1918 or from 1918 to 1919? Yes, but so now right, so your time, that, yeah. but now the time of testing and cleansing is from 1914 to 1919, unless I've got it wrong. Um, I think you quote Revelation 11, the 42 months you take literally, so that's the three and a half years. Mm-hmm. And then it says that the um, two witnesses will be dead for three days, but you take that three days spiritually to refer to about nine months to a year. So you put those two numbers together, three and a half years plus nine months to about a year, and that's how you get from 19... 19- 14, late 1914 to 1919, I think. Uh-huh. Um, I, am, am I correct? or? I'll, I'll be honest with you, Robert. I would have to do a little bit okay. more research and just check all that for you. Do you want me to do that for you? Yes, we can always um, speak again. We could. This could just be touching base and we could, we could speak yeah, again sure. and maybe go through the chapter 54, provided we stick to that chapter... And it's particularly how this chapter relates to the 1919 date that I'm particularly interested in. Okay, yeah, that's not a problem. I'll have a look at that for you. When when is the best time to catch you, Robert? Um, I can never speak on a Monday, although I have to be in this Monday morning because I'm expecting a delivery. Yeah, I'll I'll be at work, I'm afraid, so I won't be able to to give you a call back at that point, I'm afraid. Right, never on a Monday then. Um, Okay. The best thing. How, how to, would, that, would, would a Thursday evening suit you? Um, yes, as, uh, the, what's, what's convenient for me is giving me lots of notice. So, what time on okay. Thursday evening? And um, shall we say? Let me just have a think now. Can we say around about seven o'clock? Seven o'clock on Thursday evening. Would you make it seven thirty? Then I can go to the shop and yeah, come back. Seven thirty. So yeah. I'm always there at seven o'clock sharp, usually to look for bargains. Um, okay, that, no problem. <laughs> that's chapter 54 in your book, Enjoy Life. I, was it Eric the name? Sorry, my name's Scott. Scott, I do beg your pardon, Scott. Oh, I'll write sorry. that in the diary so I don't forget. Um, Scott, thank you. Um, yeah. The other thing is, if I go to chapter 54 on page 225, paragraph one, who is the faithful and discreet slave? It says Jehovah has always used a man or a small group of men to give direction to his people. After Jesus' death, the apostles and elders in Jerusalem took the lead, 
Following that pattern, today a small group of elders, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, provides spiritual food and directs the preaching work. This group is the faithful and discreet slave whom Jesus appointed. Um, it says Jehovah has always used a man or a group of men to give direction to his people, and it later explains this is a faithful and discreet slave, yes? Yeah, yeah. so, so down through history, when we look through God's word, the Bible, you can always see that the God has used specific men or prophets or groups of men uh, to be able to direct what his will is here on the earth. I mean, the first watchtower was published in 1879, so between the, the second century and the year 1800, could you name just a few of these people? I, I, wouldn't, I don't have a list, I'm afraid, Robert, that I can give you that information, but we do know that right down through the centuries there's always been a thread of those who were looking to make sure that God's word was uh, correctly understood and that the, the preaching of the good news would continue down through the centuries. Would that be people like John Tyndale and, and Wycliffe? It could be, yeah, it could be. But I mean, we, we won't know that at the moment. That's something that we may find out in the future in the new world. I mean, they were both Trinitarians. They, they were described as that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's not defin definitive that we can't really say that that is, but we're looking down mm. through history for those who are looking to make sure that the truth of God's Word um, and not any man-made traditions or information mm -hmm. was, what, was what was being, you know, um, put out to the public, because let's face it, most of those who were um, religiously minded, going on to churches, etc., they didn't have full access to, to God's word themselves personally, so they would be going on the teachings that they were receiving um, through the churches at that particular time, and these particular men that you've mentioned, they did look at God's word, and then they were thinking, well, why is that being taught? Because, you know, they can't find that in, in God's word itself. I mean, your book does say Jehovah has always used, always used a man or a small group of men to give direction to his people. Mm -hmm. If that's so, surely you must be able to name some of these groups or, or peoples, surely. You, you can't make a statement that Jehovah has always used a man or a group of men, always means continuously, surely. And then say, oh, I, 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 do, I don't know of any groups, or I can't name any groups. Well, I, I suppose it comes down, what we're looking for at the moment is, who is it that is actually declaring God's kingdom right now here on the earth, and continues to do so on a regular basis, making sure that we're not following traditions, but we actually follow uh, the clear direction of God's word, and of course his son Jesus Christ when he was on the earth, and the direction he gave his disciples well there are thousands of religious groups who have exactly. self-appointed leaders it. and who say you yeah. must come to us for salvation we are the That's way to it. Jesus yeah. they will say Jesus That's is the it. way to the Father That's John 14 6 but the Mormons yeah. the Christadelphians the way international a host of Sabbath keeping groups sacred name groups uh, especially Pentecostal groups connected to various TV preachers. Many of these groups will say that essentially their leaders are the way to Jesus. Jesus is the way to yes. the Father, but you must go to their church building and to their religious leaders to get to Jesus. I mean, yeah. that's what the Christ if you speak to enough Christadelphian, Seventh day Adventist, and Mormons, as I have, you kind of realize that they're all teaching the same thing. Jesus is yeah. the way to the Father, but our religious group is the way to Jesus. Yes, yeah, so what we have to do personally, Robert, is we have to examine the Scriptures, look at the Scriptures, mm -hmm. see what they actually teach us, and then make sure that that is what we're actually doing yes. ourselves when it comes to following the direction from, from Jesus and not being influenced by any you know, outside sources or any uh, thoughts from men. Yes. so that we can make sure that the direction that we follow is, you know, what Jesus taught us to do. Yes. For instance, you know, Jesus told us to, the two uh, 
you know, the, the golden rule, you know, to, to do unto others as we do to ourselves. And the most important thing is to love our Father, you know, our God, with our whole heart, whole soul, whole mind. And the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. So if these two things were put into place right across the globe, just imagine what would the difference would be. So we wouldn't be raising arms against one another or a brother in a different country. We would make sure that we put our worship of God as paramount. Well, the Quakers are neutral. The, the Quakers don't have anything to do with politics or or warfare. So, you know, yeah. if I want to find a group that's neutral in politics or warf- warfare, it wouldn't be Jehovah's Witnesses. It would be a, a Quakers or possibly a Pentecostal group, as they have okay. no involvement in warfare. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the, the, one of the, the greatest commands that was given by Jesus himself to his disciples was to go and make disciples of people of all the nations. And everybody yeah. says that's what we're doing. The Seventh-day Adventists say we're the only ones who do that. The Mormons say we're the only ones who do that. Um, Christadelphians say we're the only ones who do that. The Way International say we're the only ones who do that. There are and many groups who go around saying we, we are the fulfillment of biblical prophecy and you must come to us for salvation. There, there is a watchtower that I read. It's the 15th of November, 1981, page 21. And it says, whilst now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's organization for salvation. It says, you come to Jehovah's organization for salvation. Um, I do find that a bit difficult because I believe that Jesus said, you go to him for salvation. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. That rest there is the fulfillment of the Sabbath rest in Christ. Believing in Christ is essentially trusting in Christ, trusting in his promises, trusting that he's the Messiah. And the fulfillment of the Sabbath is to rest in that, to trust in that. Um, So that's Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I, that's Jesus, will give you rest. But but the Watchtower says you must come to Jehovah's Organization for salvation. Watchtower, 15th of November, 1981, page 21. I, I find that a bit difficult. But look, um, I will read the chapter again, okay? Okay, yeah. And I'll read it by next Thursday. If we could just stick to that chapter, 54, but also the 1919 date, would, would that be possible? Of course, yeah. If that's the point you would like to discuss, Robert, then uh, what I'll do is I'll do my own personal research on yes. that uh, and, and we'll be able to discuss that together. And you can show me from the Bible how, how the governing body was appointed in 1919 from the Bible. What I'll do is I'll look at the guidance, yes. um, find out the instruction, and uh, I'll have a look at those scriptures and we'll be able to look at that together, yeah. Smashing. OK, thank you very much. All the best. Scott. All right. Bye bye. Take care. Enjoy your evening. Bye bye.